Good afternoon and welcome to this Click IT webinar. Today we're going to be exploring the subject of doing more with what you have and harnessing all of your data to deliver a better customer experience. So firstly, a couple of things to set the scene. So within the art sector, the entertainment sector and the heritage sector, there are a number of similar data challenges that we're all facing. There's a need to use our data more effectively. We've got it in multiple systems and we need to understand our audiences, particularly our new audiences that we get every year and our loyal customers that keep coming back year on year. <laughs> Hopefully we can use this information to improve our marketing ROI and ultimately increase our customer reach, which is what we all need to be doing these days. There's also an increased pressure on the uh, the need to justify how funding streams are being spent and also to use the data that we've collected from these funding streams to actually apply for more and show that there is an ROI um, on the, the funding that is given. So for every pound that is given to an arts organization, you can say that X amount is coming back in VAT or tax and our, uh, national insurance or benefiting the communities that your activities are actually uh, working in to inc improve the situation in your local town and city. So we're talking about various different types of data here, mostly customer data, normally held in your ticketing system, possibly a separate CRM system or marketing system like MailChimp, uh, other fundraising systems as well, but also systems like venue management applications like Artifacts or EPOS systems where you're getting transactional information or room usage information coming out as well. And then the standard sort of thing like HR and finance systems uh, where you're seeing all of the extra bits and pieces of data about how the, the venues themselves work, the staff are operating, and ultimately what's on the bottom line. All of that information needs to be brought together to actually get a full 360 degree view of what's going on and generate a single version of the truth. So how do we do this? Well, today's webinar is very much going to be on the subject of ClickSense, and that's what I'll be demonstrating to you all. Um, there's a couple of things you need to know about ClickSense. Firstly, it's a data visualization platform, but it's also got a unique associative engine, which allows it to bring in data from pretty much any source that you have, whether it's a CSV file sitting on your laptop to an API or a public data source, some other SQL database, Anything that you have data-wise can be brought into the one place and transformed to make sense with each other. And the way that Click works as well uh, with Associative Engine actually connects it all together in a searchable live matrix rather than a series of queries and hierarchies. So you can move around your data really quickly and see insights that you wouldn't otherwise have generated just by running reports from the systems that you have. It also allows you to create your own dashboards very quickly, which I'll show you towards the end and tell data stories with the, the um, insight that you generate and the conclusions that you come to. In fact, right now, we are actually viewing this presentation within Click itself. So if I come out of full screen, you can see that we're in actually in a browser here, and this is the Click application. So I'm gonna take you back to the overview and we'll start having a look at the actual software itself. So Click is based on a number of different sheets. Uh, we've put it in a particular order, so we start usually with some high-level dashboards, work through a number of analysis sheets, and then finish off with some raw results at the back end, which we'll come to as we move along. So let's see what kind of insights we can actually generate from some of these sheets, and we'll start off in our dashboard. So this could be presented to anyone that needs to see this kind of information from your CEOs to your marketing team to your fundraising team. So they see a dashboard that is relevant to them and they can have as many different KPIs as they like. They can have different graphs. So we have income per month here and venue capacity down the side here. But actually one of the really nice things about Click is that all of the information you're seeing here is not static. It's dynamic and interactive. So if I want to look at a particular year, I can zoom in, show me the year now, and everything else on this page has changed to reflect just the performance statistics from 2017. There's also another key feature, unique feature for Click, which is its green, white, and gray concept. This is the idea that you can be led around your data by seeing what is associated to what you've already selected. So if I choose an area up here, say Edinburgh, 
and select that, you can see that's been highlighted green and everything else has been highlighted light gray, so what I haven't selected. If I move down to the second drop down, I have a list of different types of venue and one which is in dark gray. So this is not related to my selection. So there are no museums in the Edinburgh area. Over there are theaters, so I can select theaters. And if I go in here, I can see then a list of just of my theaters within my Edinburgh area and select the one I'm interested in. So you can see it's quite a simple concept, but it does lead you through your data and shows you things that are related to the selection you've made. Once I've selected all these three different um, selections, then it's shown here on, on the dashboard itself, all of the different KPIs are now relating to that selection. If I want to change one of my metrics here, I can see further along in the in the future. So this is now by performance, looking at the income that's come in against shows that are coming up in the next year or so. Or I can just be looking at my bottom line, what's actually come in month on month to date. But let's move on. These buttons down here actually take me to different sheets. So if I want to go to my performance and production analysis, I can do that, or I can select them up here as well. So this particular sheet is about looking at the difference between the number of productions that we have and the number of performances. So if I look back at a particular year, say last year, or this year rather, I can see that we have a number of um, performances in red and productions in blue uh, during the year. And you can see in December, we've got a very small number of productions, but a high number of performances. It's pantomime season, so we have the one show and it's repeated a number of times. But obviously throughout the year, the situation is quite different and you might have ebbs and flows. Uh, this is very useful for a programming team to be seeing if they're programming far enough ahead. So if I go back here and look in 2019, obviously it's dropped off here somewhat. That might just be that the data hasn't gone into the system, maybe the ticketing system or the venue management system. Um, or it may be that actually there's not enough stuff coming in to make the venue viable. So that is the sort of information that's very key to uh, the programming teams to make sure that every year they're balancing that out. We've got some KPIs and gauges at the top here, um, average production and performance income, the number of bookings. And these again will change depending on what I'm looking at. Um, so if I choose a particular year, they'll go up or down. But because this is customizable, you can decide what's green, what's orange and what's red and what you should be worried about in terms of income per production, etc. If I look under this one here, we've got our production type breakdown. Obviously, lots of different production types in the systems. We have quite a large other category. This is more like the top 10. And if I want to have a look at drama, for example, and see how we're doing drama wise, I can select that. And again, everything else on here changes to reflect drama. And again, I can drill down into my Edinburgh and see that most of my drama is happening in my theater, unsurprisingly. So lots of information at the, uh, just at your fingertips there. Let's move on to our venue analysis. So this gives you the idea of heat mapping as well as just mapping the information. So over here, the size of the square is the number of sales, whereas the color refers to the purchase gross. So you can see what are high margin sales and what's a particular areas that aren't making quite as much as you'd like them to. But also this is generating the concept of um, the purchase location as opposed to the performance location. So where are people actually buying their tickets? Are they coming into the theater or are they buying them online? In which case, where is the money being spent that they're buying online? Is it going to each venue or is it going to particular ones in your group? This leads us on nicely to the purchase analysis uh, tab. Again, a bit more detail, a bit more drilling down in some of this data here. We've got all sorts of things here, purchases by source, by referral, by hour, all that kind of information that you get from your system, but actually in an interactive way. So if I go into here, I can actually change this from a quite a simple graph to quite a spiky graph, quite a busy graph. But this does allow me to drill down into that data really easily and see what's going on a particular instance. So here we have a, a very high spike in counter sales, but web sales are relatively low. So what's going on there? Why is a lot of people coming into our box office, putting pressure on our box office staff when they could actually be going online? These are the shows that are actually happening at that time. What can we do to incentivize people to go online or even maybe book by their mobile using some kind of incentive? If I want to look at purchases by referral, I can choose a particular uh, type down here, or I can go and look at a particular show, so perhaps our pantomime from last year, and see what's going on there. I could drill down into maybe a radio advert and see 
the actual number of sales that were generated by that radio advert leading up to the performance in December and seeing the times of day that they were happening over here as well. So again, you can you can match up whether the times that the, the radio advert was playing match to the spikes in sales and where people are actually making those purchases. So pretty much 100% were online purchases. Were they seeing an advert at six o'clock and buying their tickets accordingly? We next move on to our customer analysis. Obviously, CRM and customer analysis are big topics within the theatre world, and there's a lot of information to be uh, generated. I've done three different sheets here to show three different aspects that you can pull out, but of course, you can bring out pretty much any information you like. So if you're not getting the reports you need, you can actually create them as dashboards within the system. This one's quite a straightforward one. Average number of purchases, average value per purchase, top 10 purchase items and amounts. Down here is quite a nice one, top 50 customers by total gross income and number of sales. And I can use my little lasso tool here to pick out a group that are quite high in both of those categories. And again, everything else on the dashboard changes then to reflect that information. Now, it may be that some of these selections are actually um, dummy sales, dummy patrons that you just put a lot of sales against, or maybe something like gift vouchers. Or it may be that they're a customer that you've never actually spoken to before and have been coming to your venue regularly and spending quite a lot of money, but you've never actually reached out and spoken to them. So there's insight like that that can generate the opportunity to give them a special moment and to encourage them to become maybe part of a membership scheme or even a donor of some sort, but at least give them a big thank you that you can create a social media buzz around because this person's been coming for quite some time. That sort of thing can be generated really easily just by bringing together all of your data and matching it up from every system you've got. The second sheet I've got here is in regards to recency and frequency. Again, two hot topics within the CRM and marketing world. Um, you could analyze this data in a number of different ways. What I've decided to do is to put two charts next to each other. I've got on the left the year of the first sale of a customer and on the right the last time that they um, purchased with us so the year of the last sale. Again, probably too early to be looking at this year as there may be a number of uh, patrons who are uh, coming again for the pantomime from last year, only ever come to the pantomime once a year. But if we look back at 2016, we can see that there's quite a wide range of uh, first years that people came and stopped coming last uh, two years ago. So why haven't these people come to us for the last two years, for example, is a question you could ask. However, there's a quite a large proportion of people that actually came for the first time and the last time in 2016, over 6,000 people, and they're worth over £315,000. Now, we talk here about the cost of acquisition of every customer that you bring in year on year. People are spending a lot of money on marketing, on advertising, on bringing these people in for particular shows. And if we could reduce the cost of acquisition by making them into regular customers, loyal customers, and we, and we actualize some of this income year on year, we could make a big dent into uh, some of the uh, shortfalls that, that are there and add quite a lot to um, the bottom line of the actual income of the venue. So as we can see here, 88% of those who came only ever purchased once, and they're generally purchasing only two tickets each time. So if you could actualize some of that to bring them back again, you could be seeing quite a lot of difference there year on year. And the last customer analysis sheet I've got to show you today is my map, which is good fun. And within Click, there is a very powerful geoanalytics um, options and solutions within here. Um, there's the ability to map pretty much any kind of data that you have. What we're looking at here, the yellow blobs are postcode districts of your customers, so where they actually live. And again, we can use our lasso tool to have a look at a particular area where the hotspots are. So on this particular one, we have a few different hotspots. The little blue blobs are the venues that these customers are going to. And the size of the blob refers to the number of purchases at that particular venue. So again, it helps you visualize where your audiences are, maybe helps you plan your outdoor advertising, that sort of stuff, or see if you're making an impact into the areas that you need to be for your funding purposes. Another nice way to narrow down an audience is to look at it by category. So I look at my ballet audience, everyone that's come to see a ballet show. Here are my hotspots, particular postcode districts that I can narrow down into. And I can also see that they are quite a distance from some of the venues uh, where the actual uh, ballet performances are happening. Now, is there a reason why they're living far away? 
uh, why is the drive time so high or is there a reason why we're not attracting people from the surrounding areas maybe from glasgow for example is there a, a way we could come up with a, a new offer some kind of membership or another 25 tickets that could encourage more people to come to ballet shows from the areas around the theatres rather than traveling from some distance all that kind of insight can be generated just by mapping that in click sense okay so we're moving on now into the results section um, this is not quite as pretty, but equally as powerful. It's literally just creating tables of raw data. So in this case, this is our customer records straight out of a system. And you can start playing with these. So looking at our top spenders or our top number of sales, maybe looking at a particular postcode district and filtering by that, or even going into one particular record. So this person has made over 617 sales, over 9,000 pounds. Are we aware of this person? Are we talking to this person? Can we give them a special moment? The really nice thing about ClickSense is that once I've made those selections, I can actually go back through all my other sheets and see them mapped on my graph, on my map here, um, see which sh shows they're going to, and see all of the different bits and pieces about when they last came, how much they've been spending, and all the other bits and pieces that we saw earlier within the customer analysis sheets. So really quite powerful to get into the data and get some more insight into the raw information that you're looking at. The next one is purchases. So this is every single purchase line that you have. If you have a query with a particular uh, purchase or want to find out more information, you can go and find that out from here and have that reference with purchase information from every other system, from your finance system, make sure it's correct. See if there are any holes in what's going on there. Or you can look at a particular item type, so maybe our two for one tickets, for example, see how a particular operator is selling them. So this particular one has sold 44. When was the last time they um, sold one? It was February. Why haven't they sold two for one tickets since February? Is it because there haven't been any two for one tickets available or because they're not making people aware of it when they're coming into the venue and they should be making aware that actually they can get these ticket offers as well. All that kind of information, that insight can be generated just by looking through the information, filtering out what you need. And lastly, we have our performance information. So again, if we look at our pantomime, I can see the, the production duration, the type, the category, etc., and all the different performances on all the different dates and the performance times and the capacities as well in a very simple and easy to use view. And if I wanna go back, I can go to our production performance analysis and see all of that information again, but filtered by my pantomime. And the same with our dashboard as well. So all very straightforward. I won't go through any more examples of the actual data I've got here, but what I will show you quickly is how you can actually create your own data and your own dashboards using the system itself. So I'm gonna create a new sheet very quickly. And I'm gonna use something called the Insights Advisor. This is actually a, an AI tool within the BI product itself, which is looking at your actual data, not just the headings, but your actual data in any, every part of the system that you brought in. And what it then does is it suggests to you particular types of graph that might be relevant to you. So you can see here, we've got some tree maps, we've got some uh, just simple bar graphs, we've got a scatter plot, we'll have that one. We've got two different measurements on the same sheet here. Uh, we've got one particular graph with a huge spike in it. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe let's add that on as well. And when you're finished, you literally click off and there is your dashboard created, ready for you to investigate and put in more sheets if you want to. If you want to add some more in manually that you know you want to include in your dashboard, you can literally go in and start dragging and dropping and creating your own dashboard from here, either starting with one of the particular fields from any of these particular locations or a particular type of chart that you know you want to see. Or you can use what's called master items. So master items are data that's been collated together, maybe put a drill down together in with that data as well, but it's always in the correct format and it's always in an easy to use way. So I can take my production name, for example, and that will be a centralized piece of data that's come from all the systems that I'm bringing in here, controlled by the IT team. So everyone that is making their own dashboards is not getting lost in the data that they're looking at. And if I want to then map that against number of purchases, I literally drag on that measure and there is my simple bar graph with shows by number of purchases. If I want to change that to something like a pie chart, I can do that, convert to pie chart, and there we go. Obviously not particularly useful one because it's got a huge amount of information on there, but you get the idea. And if you need to go backwards, you can always use the undo key. 
So it's as simple as that to make your own dashboards in ClickSense. And once you have created those, you can actually do some interesting stuff around taking snapshots of your information and using that, that data to create where we started off a story. So if we go back into our story, I can go to my last sheet, I can find my, my live number of purchases graph, add that in here. And if I want to do things like highlight the highest value, I can do that. And then I can go to present my uh, sheet to say, if you have any more questions, please do let me know. Thank you very much for attending this webinar. Thank you very much.